Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home the 6,000 watt power stroke generator. This one was listed on Facebook Marketplace for $200. Now the listing, it didn't say a whole lot other than this was about 12 years old. The engine needs to be cleaned and it also includes a couple generator cords. So didn't really ask too many questions other than when can we meet up? so I can check it out. And, you know, if this is a good running generator, 6,000 watts at 200 bucks, that is a steal. Not to mention, once you factor in the cords, this is more like a $150 purchase. Because uh, those cords can easily be sold for 50 bucks. Anyway, there were some red flags. I guess first off, the description of the listing did not say it's run condition. The pictures were poorly lit, and in one of the pictures, I could see what looked like a big stain under the generator on the floor, which is never a good thing. Anyway, once I got there, the thing that caught my attention right away was the fact that there was a bit of rust on some of the hardware. Nothing bad, but it tells me that this was not stored indoors its entire life, and that is a problem, especially with this tank design. If it rains, this area will puddle and the fuel cap will be submerged underwater. That water will get in the tank, it'll rust the tank out and do the same to the carburetor. So it was at that point I took the cap off and as you can tell from the cap, that's exactly what happened. You know, I wouldn't say it's a total loss, but it's not good. Yeah, at that point, I asked him if it ran. He said it did run 14 months ago and believes it still does. So I asked him to bring it outside and start it up. And he tried, but it showed absolutely no signs of life. So I offered him 100 bucks for everything, and he took me up on it. So the way I figure it, 50 bucks for the generator, 50 bucks for the cords. There's plenty of room here to buy parts to make this thing right. But before I do that, I wanna hear the engine run, make sure it sounds good, make sure it makes power before buying anything. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. But first, let's check the oil. Plenty of oil and it looks nice and clean. So, we're off to a good start. Let's give this a try. I've got the light connected just in case it wants to start. Fuel on. Choke on and ignition's on. Choke off. Yeah, we get absolutely no signs of life. So I'm gonna pull the airbox cover off, give it a bit of starting fluid and see if it comes to life. All right, very nice. The engine, it sounds good, and the generator head is making power. So let's get the carburetor off. We'll get it up on the bench and see what we're dealing with. This is just the tank vent that goes into the side of the air box. Get that out first.
Huh. Pretty sure that fuel valve is on. Can't say I'm that surprised. I'm sure the fuel outlet on that tank is clogged, but let me shut it off anyway. All right, what do you think? Nice and clean. Not sure. Fuel line was definitely plugged and the stuff dripping out. It's not much. So either the carb is empty, potentially not trashed, but I kind of doubt it. Let's get the bowl off, see what that looks like inside. Oh God, it's water. All water. Yeah. It's not terrible. Actually, there's a lot of gel in there. Not really seeing any rust. So that can be cleaned. I think this one has a chance. This is the pilot jet. A little hole down there for the fuel gets clogged very easily. And down the center is the main jet. You really can't see it and they don't always come out. But let's see if this one will come out. Yep. I'm shocked. It all came apart. Motion tubes a mess, but that can be cleaned up. That's the main jet. Looks to be plugged. Maybe not. But the carb was full of water, so it didn't really matter if the jets were plugged or not. It can't suck water up through the emulsion tube, through the main jet. It would have never run with that in the carburetor. So let's clean this up. I'll run through everything, all the passages, just make sure they're clear and run this through the ultrasonic. And I think this will come back.
Definitely a lot of junk down here. This is not a jet, but the fuel does need to pass through these holes to get up to the main jet. There are some small holes here that serve as the pilot circuit. They need to be clear. They usually are. It's almost the consistency of mud. And I actually saw that in the fuel tank when I looked when buying it. I actually haven't seen it since, so I'm thinking when I tipped the generator to roll it around, it, it moved all this mud or whatever it is to the other side of the tank. So once I get this carb cleaned up, I'm going to run it and test it a bit, but I'm leaning toward buying a new tank. I think new tanks for this are about $80 and a gallon of Evaporust is about 20. And it'll still never make it look like the way that it should. Yeah, it's cleaned up pretty well. I'll give it a little bit longer, but I think a lot of that discoloration is just corrosion at this point and not dirt. So maybe another five or 10 minutes just for good measure. Regardless of whether I get a new tank or not, I need to get this fuel out of the tank. So I'm going to eliminate this filter and hopefully we get a better flow out of the tank. Nothing. There we go.
It's a slow process, but it is coming out, and the fuel doesn't smell bad, and it looks respectable. You know, I think this was recently added to the tank. I don't see any water in the bottom, and it is a little hazy, so there might be a little in there that'll come out if I give it a day or two. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to finish draining the tank. But I think that fuel can be salvaged. So the $50 generator, I think now just became a $30 generator. There's the end result. Not too bad, all things considered. So let's see if it works. Yeah, make sure the pilot jet snaps down in place. This one's not. I'm just going to add a bit of WD-40. It should help it go in. There we go. This is the idle set screw and this generator does not idle. So don't drive it in too far. Only about two threads should stick through. And in this application, really the only purpose to this is to hold that pilot jet in place. Let's test the needle real quick. Like this, the valve should be closed. And when you blow through, you should hear nothing. If you hear anything at all, it's going to leak. That's fine. That should do it. So the tank, it's done draining. So I'm going to remove the tank, reinstall this, feed it a little bit of fuel, and we'll fire it up, make sure things sound good. Yeah, the last bit that came out doesn't look great. And now we can see the bottom of the tank a little bit better. Yeah. Not good. Anyway, only four bolts holding it down. We'll get the bolts out of the way. Probably disconnect this line and the tank should be free.
I think that's it. The fuel it's holding right there, so the bowl is full. Let's try starting it. I'll take it. It started second pull, engine speed stabilized, governor's doing a good job. The hertz were at 61.1 and about 121 volts. So yeah, I have no reservations about getting a new tank. So let me pause it here. I'm going to take a look online and see what's available. The tank's been ordered. It should be here in a few days. So I want to turn my attention to cleaning this generator up. It is quite a mess. I think at one point there was a mouse or some sort of critter living on top of this. So it's not gonna clean up great. There is gonna be some corrosion under here, but you know, I've got a few days, so I'll clean it up the best I can. And I also wanna get that heat shield off, maybe throw a little bit of fresh paint on it, assuming the bolts will crack loose. So, you know, I don't like power washing these, I don't want a chance damaging the stator, but in this case, I think it calls for it. It's pretty bad. So I'm gonna put some plastic around that stator, try to protect it and power wash the frame and the engine.
Let's see if these bolts come off. They're only an eight millimeter bolt. I think there's a good chance they're gonna break, but let's see. Oh, got that one. Try the impact on low. Medium. Nice. That was the last one. All the others are loose, so we should be good to get that off. The new tank showed up today and I didn't order a Power Stroke tank because Power Stroke wanted $230 for their tank. So instead I ordered a Ryobi tank, which I believe is the same thing, but Ryobi sells theirs for 80 bucks. So let's get it out of the box, drop it in place and see if those holes are going to line up. Yeah, the Ryobi tank, it seems to be a perfect fit on this power stroke generator. All the bolt holes, they line up perfectly. So I don't think I'm gonna have any issues getting this tank installed. You know, I also picked up a new fuel cap and roller valve. And it's worth pointing out, this tank is actually an improved version. I wasn't expecting that, but the original tank, it failed due to the design. Rainwater would puddle and have nowhere to go and eventually fill the tank with water, destroying it. But this new tank, it's not gonna have that issue because the rainwater can just shed off the back. So yeah, not a bad design improvement. Anyway, I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I wanna get that heat shield reinstalled as well as the air box, and then we'll finish it up by getting that tank installed.
Just using a bit of WD-40 to help push this valve in place. find it odd the new fuel cap it did not come with this loop which is what keeps it in place I just took a minute and made up a piece of fuel line, modeling it on the old one. So it's pretty much ready to go, but it occurs to me there's a problem here. This engine, it is a Honda clone engine with a Honda clone carburetor, and Hondas and Honda clones use 3 16 fuel line for the inner diameter that connects the carburetor to the fuel tank. But this one, it's a little bit odd because the tank needs quarter inch line with a quarter inch valve and a quarter inch fuel filter and that has to connect to a 3 16 line so the thing that makes that possible is a special line which comes after the fuel filter i already threw it away because it was all gummed up but i do have one from a ryobi this side is quarter inch and it reduces it to 3 16 this one it's a little short Ideally, I'd hook that up to the carburetor, put the fuel filter on this side, and just run it right to the fuel valve. But I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that, because I think this right here is going to end right about where the air box kind of pinches against the blower housing. So, yeah, let's give this a try, see if we can make it work. Otherwise, going to have to figure something else out. Yeah, I think that'll work.
yeah, I think that'll be fine. This just needs to be cut back a little and I think we'll be in good shape, but I'm gonna leave the final connection for later. I'm actually gonna test it using the test tank and leave that new tank dry. Let's give this thing a try. I've got the fuel supply hooked up as well as the kilowatt and two space heaters. Now, I know the carburetor runs the engine well, but I haven't tested it under load. So we'll do that now. I wanna see what the voltage and the Hertz are both with and without a load to make sure that everything is good. I had to shut it down real quick. The needle does not seem to be working at all and this fuel going everywhere. So I know it was working the other day. Uh, potentially it is just stuck. So I'm gonna drain the bowl. Potentially that'll free it up. Otherwise I might have to pull that carb off again. That bolt was pretty loose. I'm gonna turn the fuel back on. I might have done it. It's been 30 seconds. Don't see anything yet. So I'm gonna pull the spark plug out. I wanna pull the engine over. Most likely a bunch of fuel is sitting in the cylinder. So I wanna get that out before trying to start it again. Just get the spark plug boot out of the way. And the ignition should be off when you're doing this. You don't want to ignite the fuel. Unfortunately, this has a momentary switch. So I have to hold that down while pulling it over and hopefully don't let off pressure. Because if I do, this will spark and potentially ignite that fuel. Okay, good. Nothing made it into the engine. Try it with the choke off, since I'm sure it's flooded.
That was much better. The fuel leak seems to be a thing of the past, and that's not too uncommon, especially after you clean a carburetor and put it back together. You know, things sometimes just aren't centered right. And sometimes, too, the solution I use can cause things to stick. Not to mention that carburetor was a complete mess when we started. But as far as this generator goes, I mean, I think it's all set at this point. It's making good power. The engine speed is good and loaded it halfway to 3,000 watts. It held just below 60 hertz. And given where we started, I mean, the tank was a mess, the carburetor was a mess, and the whole generator was a mess. I mean, clearly someone did not take very good care of it, but at this point we have something that looks good and runs good. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.